Doc here from Applied Ballistics and today I'm going to go over the AB Analytics software. Now this is just a quick overview to show you how the software functions and the kind of things you can do with it. For more information on some important parts of the software such as WES as well as ballistic calibration we recommend that you read the Applied Ballistics for Long Range Shooting 3rd Edition as well as Accuracy and Precision for Long Range Shooting. These are going to give you a good background and understanding of the finer details of those aspects of the program. This overview is not designed to go over that portion for you. Now when you purchase AB Analytics you are given a file like this which will extract and what you want to do is you want to go ahead and extract that to your desktop. So you would click here, open it up, and extract to the desktop. Once you finish that extraction on your desktop, it's going to create a folder like this. Now this folder is going to have three more folders inside of it, the app, the device, and the profiles. The profiles actually saves your gun profiles that you create. The app folder just has important information in it, but one of those important files is actually your license.dat file. If I can find it here real fast. Right here. When you upgrade your version of AB Analytics, this file is important. So you want to take this once it's been unlocked and you want to save it to your desktop or to a documents folder and just hold on to that. The software itself is here. The profile loader is here, and then we have a user guide. When we open the software, the first thing that we see is just a basic startup screen. From the top left, we have file. We can open profiles and save profiles. This allows us to open a gun profile or to save a gun profile. We have graphics preferences. If you would like to make the text heavier or lighter, you can do that. You can reset it. But if you need better visibility, you can change the font size. We can export the range card. Down here you can see a standard range card which hasn't been tuned yet, but you can actually export that to an Excel file which you can then print off or take with you. From edit, we can edit the units. Now under units we have an input unit of mixed English or metric. And then we have an output unit of inches, mils, or MOA. Inches, or inches per 100 yard, is 1 inch at 100 yards. MOA is true MOA, 1.047 inches at 100 yards. So you can pick either one that you would like to use. Now when we get started, the first thing that we want to do is we just want to name the profile something. doesn't matter what we name it, not a big deal. And from... The main ballistic configuration screen, because we have WES down here and Wind Profile Analysis as well. Our very first thing is that we want to pick a bullet. And from the bullet database, we have G1, G7s, as well as the custom drag curves. Now, if you want to skip to something like Sierra, you can hit the S button. If we want to skip to Burger, we can put BE. If we want to skip to RUAG, we just put R. So we're going to go with the burger, and we're going to go ahead and scroll down, and we want the 264 AR hybrid, no big deal. Two sixty four AR hybrid, and hit OK. Now prompts us, if you select a new bullet, it erases. All this information goes away, so keep that in mind. But that's why it's important to load the bullet first before we do anything. Now bullet length is automatic, or you can input it yourself. doesn't really matter. Um, I recommend that you just go ahead and use the length that we have from the library. And you'll also notice G1 and G7 are blacked out. That's because we're using a custom drag curve, and the BC is 1.00. That's because it's encrypted. So don't worry about this if you select a custom drag curve. Now, muzzle velocity, we have used table. That's the muzzle velocity temperature table. And just like on the Kestrel, we can build a muzzle velocity temperature table. 
so that the muzzle velocity will automatically adjust for changes in temperature. But we'll go ahead and put 2900. Our zero range is 100 yards. Side height is fine and 8 inches. Inside of here we have the ballistic calibration. Now ballistic calibration is discussed in detail in accuracy and precision for long range shooting. However, if you need to calibrate your muzzle velocity, basically if your firing solution is off in the supersonic range, we can do that. We can put in 800 yards and we can put the true drop, calculate, and it'll give us a muzzle velocity. Then if we click use muzzle velocity, it'll input it here. Same for drop scale factor. Drop scale factor is for the transonic to subsonic range, as you can see here. If your firing solution is off at ELR or at 1200 or 1500 yards, this is the portion that we want to calibrate. Here's the drop scale factor table. When we start doing those calibrations, this table will populate and we can clear it, but we can also see it to see what's going on. Under advanced settings, if you zero at 100 yards, you do not need to worry about the sight in conditions. But if you are zeroed at 300 yards, then those become more important. Zero pressure is station pressure, not barometric. We do not use barometric pressure in this program. We use station pressure, but to activate it, you check the X and then it populates. Zero offset for elevation and windage and sight scale factor for if you did a tall target test and you need to adjust your turret clicks. Now over here on the target, we can input anything that we want. You know, if you want to put a mile in, that's fine. Target heading azimuth. This is going to affect our vertical component of Coriolis. You'll notice if I put zero degrees, it goes away. If I put 180 degrees, our vertical component remains zero. If I put 90 degrees, our vertical component is then adjusted. So heading is very important. Inclination is just your angle to the target, um, five degrees, 10 degrees. Latitude is also very important. You'll notice, and this is the firing solution component section, which tells you a breakdown of aerodynamic jump, vertical Coriolis drop, horizontal Coriolis effect or Coriolis drift, wind drift, spin drift can be turned on or off. But you'll notice that whenever I change this, let's say I go to 45 degrees north, that these numbers change. So it's very important that you input your latitude. I can even input 32.8. Target speed, um, negative for left, positive for right directions, but that's for moving target. Now, another important factor is going to be wind. And you'll see that if I put wind is at 12 o'clock, or if I put wind is at 3 o'clock, that these numbers are going to shift, especially aerodynamic jump. Watch what happens to aerodynamic jump whenever I put the wind at 9 o'clock. Flips. Temperature. 92. Pressure. Pressure, again, on this program is station pressure. Please do not use barometric pressure. It's going to cause a problem. It's not going to calculate correctly. Now, we've been asked in the past about using density altitude. There's a very specific reason that we do not use density altitude. This program calculates the speed of sound. And for that, it's important that we have the temperature correct and the station pressure correct. If we just allowed a user to use density altitude, the speed of sound would be wrong. And you see here, we actually have mock values in this software. So in order to properly calculate the speed of sound, we actually need all of these inputs to be correct. Now, when I hit calculate, I have a standard range card down here, but also this is populated up here, elevation, windage, and lead. If I change this to 950 yards, you'll see my elevation adjusts appropriately. If I change it to 25 yards, again, it populates appropriately. So that's for your actual firing solution based on the target data. But for your range card, I can go to settings and I can put, uh, I want my range card to start at 400 and I want it to stop at 2000. And I can put, I want my range card at 25 yard increments. I can even, if you really want to break down a specific zone, I can put 600 yards and I can put 800 yards. Uh, and then I can go down here and I can put one yard increments. And you'll see that it actually populates in a one yard increment. 
So this is a very flexible system. I'll do 1600 and I'll do 25 yard increments. Okay. Now, this range card that I've created can now be exported. If I hit export range card, it saves as a cell file. But you get mills for your windage and your elevation. And if you want to change that, I just go to units and I go to output and I go to MOA and I don't have to do anything. It's automatically switched. I get my drop in inches. We get our velocity, our mock value, and our time of flight. So that's how you use just the main screen. I'm going to skip WES for a minute and go to wind profile analysis. Wind profile analysis allows me to set up winds at different ranges. Let's say at the firing line I have a wind of 9 miles an hour. And then it remains that way. It's 9 here, it's 9 here. But then I hit a canyon. All right, so I have a, a vertical drop. I cross over a small canyon that's 200 yards. And I have a vertical wind component of 4 miles per hour here. And I'll skip down to 600. I'm at the other side of the canyon and over here I actually have a negative 4. Right? So we'll do negative 4 and then no wind and then at the target I have 2 miles an hour. Now you can adjust these distances and this is just for demonstration purposes. But what it does is it builds the correct windage to the target. It takes all these things into account and allows you to adjust this. Now Maybe my target's at 857 yards, so I can recalculate that. No big deal. And we get our corrected windage to the, the average and the corrected windage and elevation. So that's how we can use wind profile analysis to get a better idea of what the bullet's doing. Now, WES. WES is more complicated than it looks. So for using WES, we have our weapon's already loaded, and this is the weapon that's being used that we built before. Now, we have wind effect, vertical, horizontal, shot simulation, and probability of hit. We also have the range to the target, the rifle's precision. Maybe you have a 2 MOA rifle, maybe you have a half MOA rifle. We have different targets. We have the IPSC, we have a circular, we have a rectangular. Maybe you want to shoot a car at a mile. You can put that. Maybe you want to shoot a groundhog at 300 yards, so we can do that as well. We can adjust the target type and the target size. As far as the system variables go, this is really something that you need to take very carefully. Uh, a good shooter at an unknown range can judge wind maybe 3-4 miles an hour. Uh, the Kestrel wind meter is good to 1 mile an hour. So you need to input what you're using. If I'm using a Kestrel wind meter, I can go ahead and input one. I know some of these are going to be 3% you know, on the accuracy. Um, for the muzzle velocity, I want to do my SD. So uh, maybe I have an SD of 9. Maybe I'm using ammunition that has an SD of 18. But we want to go ahead and put that in there correctly. Now let's say that I can judge wind to 4 miles an hour and I can judge temperature to 5 degrees. I'm not using a Kestrel, so I know I can do maybe 20% humidity if I'm just guessing. Um, my laser range finder has a 3% error, and I know that that 3% error comes out to an SD of, well, let's say 20 meters. Um, I don't, we're just inputting numbers here to Try to be accurate. Maybe you're using GPS and you're accurate down to one meter. Inclination or the, the angle. Maybe I have an ADI that's five degree increments. So I know that I'm within five degrees. Maybe I have something more advanced that's one degrees. And uh, I'm using a cell phone that's got a compass that's good to within five degrees. And I know my latitude is done off of a cell phone, so the GPS. Now, I go ahead and hit calculate. And this is my probability of hit. This is my wind effect. So I can see exactly how the wind is affecting that. This is my vertical uncertainty. 
Now this is pretty cool because I can see my vertical uncertainty. Maybe I have ammunition, the SD is at 23. So now we can update that. We can see the change here. Maybe I have custom ammunition that SD is to 8 on average. So I can see how that affects the change. Shot simulation. This is going to show you my probability of hit percentage. Now, we notice that it's 8.6%. Well, we have to take into account all of these factors. And we can see at range what my probability of hit how it falls off but let's say that I am using a Kestrel so we can increase some of this my temperature is good to two degrees three degrees my humidity uh, is good to three percent I have an SD of eight let's say I'm using a really good laser rangefinder so I know that it's within 10 meters and recalculate so now I have a 29.4 percent shot hit probability. It's important to know that this hit probability is not at a known range that I'm going to all the time. I go to the same range, I shoot the same firing direction, I shoot the same targets every time. This hit percentage is a range I've never been to before. It's on a target I have never shot at before, ever. It's at a location that I am unfamiliar with. This is not designed to tell you how well you're going to do at your favorite range. It is designed to tell you how well you're going to do in an unknown situation. So it's really important to read the books and to understand WES fully. But this should give you a good overview of AB Analytics and what it can do and the kind of solutions that we can do with it. So let's say that I want to hit for instance, uh, a white tail deer I'm hunting. So I'll go with uh, this deer has a heart lung shot about eight inches at 600 yards with this rifle. And let's go ahead and calculate. So now we can see that on this particular shot with this setup in an unknown location I've never been to before I'm on an adventure hunt. I have a 70% chance of taking that shot. So I, of making that shot, my apologies. So I can actually determine different scenarios with this program. And I can see if I go to my probability of hit, where a safe zone is, I can see at 350 yards, I, I'm good. And really 400 yards, 98%, I'm good. But you can see how that falls off. Now let's do a thousand meters. And you can see how our hit percentage falls. And really, you can determine a cutoff point. Maybe I don't want to do anything past 90%. So I know here we're looking at a little bit over 500 meters. Um, this is a good learning tool and a good teaching tool. But hopefully this overview gives you an idea of how to use analytics and what analytics is.